today's notes on tangents. Um, now, tangents we had during Sokotoa, we had the word tangent, but now we're talking about tangents to a circle. And um, it's kind of where the word tangent is known. And so let's jump right into the vocabulary. A tangent, all right, this is the full definition from the book. So let's try to simplify that. A tangent is a line or a segment that just barely grazes the circle. It just touches it at one point. So it just touches the circle, just barely. And so that point is the point of tangency. It's the point where the tangent and the circle meet. And our rules are going to be tied to that point of tangency. And so at this point in the unit, you should be able to draw, if I gave you a blank circle, a chord, a diameter, a radius, and now a tangent. A common tangent is a line or a segment all right, that is tangent to more than one circle at the same time. And so this line here is tangent to this circle and to this circle at the same time. Or the way it crosses here is tangent to both of them at the same time. And so those three words, tangent, point of tangency, and common tangent, are the vocabulary. Tangent is a line that crosses or touches a circle actually only one time. Point of tangency is that point. And a common tangent is a line that's tangent to multiple circles at the same time. And so now these are the rules. Now most of the homework is going to be based on these rules. So let's read them and then make sure we understand. In a plane, a line is tangent to a circle if and only if it is perpendicular to the radius drawn to the point of tangency. What is that saying? That is saying a radius, a radius and a tangent are always perpendicular. A radius and a tangent are always perpendicular. Now they might try to disguise that by drawing it as a diameter. But a radius is part of a diameter, and so that rule would still be true. They'd still be perpendicular. We're also going to use this because what they're going to do is they're just going to add a line out here. Oh, well, let's try to draw a straight line. Okay, let's just draw our own circle again. All right, that's a tangent. That's a radius. Right? And so they're going to make a right triangle. And now because we know perpendicular, we know it's a right triangle, and so we have to use that Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. It works in any right triangle. So because they know, we know that those two lines are perpendicular, if I form a triangle there, I would know that that A squared plus B squared equals C squared works. That's review. Uh, from triangles and Pythagorean theorem, it's still going to be very important to this section. The one on the right simpler, it says over here, if two segments from the same exterior point are tangent to the circle, then they are congruent. So they go from the same point to the same circle, the same point tangent to the same circle, they are congruent to each other. So AB is congruent to BC. Okay. Much simpler, <clears throat> if you think of like, you want to be standing equidistant from some place. You're standing at a point that is tangent to both the places you're trying to be equidistant to, from. Right. So on your homework, you're just going to have to, you don't have to draw. You just have to tell me how many common tangents there are. I want to draw them for you right now. There's that one would be a tangent. That one would be a tangent. And this one right here would be tangent. And so this would have three common tangents. Here, you could have a tangent at the top. You could have a tangent that connects from the bottom of one to the top of the other, or vice versa. You could also have a tangent along the bottom. That's not very well drawn, but you know it's there. And so this one would have four common tangents. The question I usually ask my students in class at this point is, could something ever have zero common tangents? So 
Think about that. So the answer is yes, but what would that look like? Well, concentric circles would be an example of <clears throat> no common tangents. Questions like this that say determine and justify. Right? mean that they don't know they're not saying yes it's a tangent the question is basically asking is it tangent question mark and i know that if it is tangent <clears throat> this is a perpendicular because that's a radius so if the answer is yes that's perpendicular which would make this a right triangle and so i can do a squared plus b squared equals c squared and then if it's true if that works out then it's yes it's tangent if it's not true and it's no, it's not tangent. Now, before I can do that, I need to know how long is side AC. And so side AC, now that's nine. No, it looks like I said to talk about why. I kind of went fast there. This radius here is nine. Well, this is still just a radius right there. So it's also nine. Now the whole thing though is nine plus six or fifteen. So I have 9 on one side, 12 on one side, and 15 is the hypotenuse. The longest side is always the hypotenuse. And so again, I'm trying to say yes or no, is it a tangent? If this is true, then the answer is going to be yes. And so 81 plus 144 equals 225. And so I got that it's true. So is my answer yes or no? Is segment BC a tangent to circle A? <coughs> yes. The whole point is that it's uh, justified. So yes, BC is a tangent. Here, I need to find x and they say right here assume that any segment that appears to be tangent is in fact tangent which means that this is in fact 90 degrees and so i do the same kind of math i have a right triangle now i minus 225 from both sides and then i square root to get x by itself And so I found the value for x. Last but not least, a photographer wants to take a picture of a local fountain. <clears throat> she positions herself at point A so that the fountain will be centered in the picture. Segments A, B, and A, C are tangent to the fountain as shown. If the lengths of the tangents are given in feet, find A, B. And so, again, we're saying that both of these lines are tangents, and if they're both tangents, then they are congruent. And so 7x minus 9 equals 5x plus 5 minus 5x from both sides. All right, add 9 to both sides, divide by 2. Now, the last step I have to do is plug in AB equals... 7x minus 9, 7 times 7 is 49, minus 9 is 40, and it said in feet. These are the problems if you're in my class. Go ahead and give them a try. I wish you the best of luck. Let me know if you have further questions.